Good morning and welcome to the vlog. What an absolutely stunning morning it is. The next few days are predicted to be rain, so I need to decide how much progress I want to make today. There are 20 locks between me here and the next decent stretch where there are no locks. So I'm wondering whether to just have a mega session today and try to do all 20 locks, which will also take me to a Canal and River Trust facilities point where I could top up the water and empty the toilet, things like that. It sounds good in principle, but I know that after about the first six or seven locks, I'm gonna be thinking, this was a bad idea, and looking for somewhere to pull up. In theory, a single lock takes me about 15 minutes. You're not hurrying, and it depends on how the lock is set and all that, but about 15 minutes. So 20 locks should be five hours. It's just gone nine o'clock in the morning, so that is plenty of time to do the whole lot today. Whether I will or not, ask me again after the first few locks. But I'm setting off in optimistic spirit, like these joggers forging forward full of beans. It's another bit of canal where I want to lean over with a garden strimmer as I go by. These reeds are hogging the canal. The first lock is just around the corner, and just in case you didn't know what the big hole in the ground was, this lock unusually has a sign. Next to it might look like a load of overgrown weeds, but peer closely, and it was clearly once another lock paired with this one. The same is true of the next lock down the flight, though the abandoned one there hasn't become anything like so overgrown. Peering through the old gates into the brambles, you can just make out the lock walls, and there's even a bit of water running through the bottom. At the top, another set of stop planks, which I've seen a lot of along this recent stretch. Do they have a big problem with breaches on the Trent and Mersey or something? Heading into the second lock and another boater coming up is happy to help, as the quicker I go down, the quicker he can come up. And then straight into lock number three, which I did on my own, but which was usefully already filled because of that other boat coming up. And locks four, five and six followed in fairly quick succession. I'm an hour and a half in, six locks down, so that tallies with my quarter of an hour per lock average. I have had a couple of people helping me with gates and paddles on some of the locks, which is lovely. It is a very warm day, but it is also very breezy, really breezy. The wind keeps pushing the boat sideways. And as I'm trying to moor up to do a lock or after the lock to go back and shut the gates, normally you just fling a fairly casual centerline rope on a bollard and all's well, but the boat is drifting all over the place. So it's becoming a bit of a palaver. Still, I'm doing pretty well, I think. And there's now a bit of a stretch until I get to the next lock. Fans of Harry Potter sit up now as, believe it or not, I'm approaching Snape's aqueduct. No word on whether Dumbledore gets one as well. It's rather curiously shaped. Perhaps a spell went wrong in construction. Round a corner and on the right, a stash, if that's the right word, of canal and river trust workboats. And this is clearly the mother load of stop planks Either that, or someone is disturbingly organised for bonfire night. It's a fantastic day. I am slathered in sun cream, and I just liked this corridor of trees along the canal. Ah, someone had to do it, didn't they? This is proper farming country with big old metal sheds and barns and gates and mud and cows who are doing a little sunbathing, and why not? For some reason, it felt very South Fork. I kept expecting JR, Bobby and Pammy to drive up and have a row. At Road Heath, another single lock in what was once a pair. I wonder why they went out of action. Having two is much better cost of maintenance, I expect. But a problem on emerging. I need to get over to the left where the lock landing is in order to run back and shut the gates. But as you can see, it's a straight edge on the right and narrow boats pivot in the middle when they turn. In other words, to get the bow going left, the back end needs to go right 
and with that edge I can't do it. I got stuck running along this bank because I couldn't turn the bow out. All of that got me a furious way from another boater who thought I was just making off without going back to shut the gates. Eventually I ended up reversing back and outwards. What's this now? Lock 8? Lock 9? A CRT volunteer happened to be passing, not on duty, and gave me a hand by shutting the gates after me, which, let me tell you, is the single most useful thing anyone can do for a solo boater. All the rest is fine, but stopping to go back and shut the gates after is a right nuisance. Now, hands up, who wants to see me making a right cock up? Oh, that many? Oh, all right then. Here I am, pausing at a lock to go and set it, but I was lazy. The boat had come to a stop with the bow next to a mooring ring, so I tied the boat on that instead of using the centre line. OK, fine, that'll stop it drifting off. But notice there's quite a bit of wind on that water, and as I pop forwards, you guessed it, the unsecured back of the boat is merrily being pushed out sideways and ended up entirely across the canal. Here we go, see it turning? By the time I'm back from opening the lock gate, the boat is firmly across the canal and I had to run down the gunnels, blast the engine with tiller hard left to swing it back against the breeze. Worse yet, I was then so flustered, I forgot I was still tied on at the front, so of course this happened, the boat promptly thumping to a stop. Thankfully, another boater gave me a hand. I did look like a right tit, let me tell you. Ah oh well, it's always when there's somebody watching. So I'm going to press on now, and just look for somewhere to stop that the boat isn't going to blow away from. By this point, I was getting a bit fed up, as predicted, not only with the non-stop onslaught of lock after lock, but mainly my own incompetence and the increasing blusteriness of the wind. So I started to look for somewhere to pull up, and although these boats have all the spaces next to the metal armco, there is just enough room at the end for me to get moored on pins into the ground. So I did, and I rested here for a day. Good morning. It's been a fairly rainy and grey sort of day so far, but there's a bit of blue sky finally starting to emerge, and so I shall press on. It's not going to be the most interesting day, I don't think, for filming. I've got ten locks to do over the space of just two miles. So lock after lock after lock after lock. But if I'd spot anything, I will, of course, grab the camera. Let's press on. A quick hop around the boat ahead of me first, just to get onto the lock landing so that other boats coming along know I intend to go down. But with another boat hot on my tails, I let them go through first, otherwise I'd just be holding them up, as I'm always slower being single-handed than boats which have couples or crew on board. Rather happily, it turned out, they were people I know from Twitter, who were paired with a boat that had just gone down. That does explain why the lock was set, so they should have had it anyway. We had a good old natter. It was the first time I'd ever met them in real life. They also showed me this, the propeller they'd had to replace a week or so earlier after it struck an underwater rock as they were coming out of a lock. Look how mangled it got. In fact, they had to replace the prop, gearbox and drive shaft, as I recall. Very kindly, they helped me with the next few locks. And with 10 to do, in brief, my day looked like this.
Some brief highlights from all that included going under the M6 motorway and marvelling at how fast these motorised carriages go on these newfangled Tarmacadam roads. I went past some nice horses who ignored me, they had good grass to eat. This was interesting, the two boats ahead are waiting for the locks to come free so I need to hold back but in the open with a stiff breeze the boat wants to drift sideways. This is always a challenge when trying to hold position. You have to do a little nudge of the throttle and steer into the wind and try to keep still. It's quite a technical exercise and a useful skill to master, which I'm still practising. See here, for example, I'm at quite an angle to straight ahead in order to compensate for the wind pushing me right, but I can't use too much throttle, else I'll end up on the back fender of the boats ahead. This horse too deserved a shot for his lovely 1970s flares. Speaking of equines, who could resist a pub called the Romping Donkey? Yet another lock that was once part of a pair. This time it's being used as an overflow channel for excess water from the pound. Backing into Malkin's Bank Golf Club, this little arm, which appears to be a wharf and boat builder's yard. By this lock, I'm 80% of the way through the ones I'll do today. That is lock 64 done, which means I've done eight today. Two more to go, and then I get to Wee Lock, where there is a CRT facilities block. I can top up my water, empty the loo, and I'll either stop there or maybe just go a little bit further on into the countryside. And this is what it looks like coming into Wheelock, which is just a little village really. You pull up here on the left for boaters' facilities, which include Waterpoint, Elsan and rubbish disposal. There's a couple of shops and restaurants too. I now reckon my water tank can last me over three weeks, but I usually refill on a weekly basis or thereabouts, just to ensure it's never too low. That's the toilet block with the red rubbish bin just peeking out from behind it. The building ahead with the cars outside is an Italian restaurant and you can see a pub in the middle of the picture. Press pause on the video now to read this history of how Wheelock got its name. Domestic duties done and I'm off to find somewhere to moor. But exiting the village, there's warning signs on the towpath. What is going on here? Slow ahead it is past these working boats filled with metal piling, machinery, rocks and other canal miscellany. It appears the Canal and River Trust is repiling the bank here. Nowhere to moor here, it's too overgrown both on the towpath and with the trees and I want my solar panels to be able to see any sun. This looks better. Nice and quiet, in the countryside, and metal armco to tie up to. Perfect 